All I ever wanted to do was be a forester. I never wanted to do anything but be in the woods. My grandfather, he worked on this place. This whole forest, this whole ecosystem, I have seen this type of situation disappearing. I mean, my whole life. And this may sound corny or whatever you want to call it. I'm trying to save every tree I can. Longleaf pine is a very unique ecosystem. And at one time, not that long ago, pre-European contact, it, it comprises 60 to 90 million acres from Southern Virginia down to Central Florida and over into Eastern Texas and into the Piedmont of Georgia and Alabama. When I was coming along, they were saying it was second only to the tropical rainforest and diversity. Now they're saying it's equal to the rainforest and diversity. Longleaf pine actually depends on frequent fire to sustain itself and to thrive. Its regeneration, its germination, all that cycles and revolves around fire. More than 90 97% of longleaf pine ecosystem has been removed. We are a part of the ecosystem no matter how far removed we might think we are. Everything is living. The trees, the earth, the air, the water. And when you respect our natural resources as part of your family, you're going to use them differently. You're going to look at them differently. Habitat restoration is critically important. It's amazing how much we can do when we work together. Uh, we have planted 1.6 million acres um, of longleaf pine across the southeast. It, it's, it's changed, but we're trying to protect what we got left. Longleaf is, is the center of the longleaf ecosystem, the tree itself. And without it, we wouldn't have the ecosystem. Longleaf pine has the longest pine needles and the largest pine cones of any southern pine species. As the ambient humidity becomes dry, the cone expands and it releases the seed, which is a nice little kernel of protein uh, with a wing on it. And when it pops out of here and it's released, doesn't take much breeze for those things to helicopter the ground. The seedlings need mineral soil to be able to germinate. So if a fire comes through at the right time of year and you have a good cone crop that year, then you have this beautiful mineral soil for the seedlings to hit the ground, pop up, not have any competition, and grow from there. Within that first year, it establishes itself into what we call the grass stage. While it's sitting there growing in that grass stage, people think, oh, this, this tree is not growing at all, but it's actually putting down an, an enormous tap root. You could see these longleaf seedlings, how far the tap root's already gone, because they have to get through the sandy soils to get down uh, to the water. When the light conditions, the nutrient conditions, everything's right, and then it starts to elongate. It's in the bottle brush stage. After a few years, it'll start putting out lateral branches, still growing vertically. It's in the sapling stage, coming more mature, where at that point, the tree will start coning, producing seed, and then producing seedlings of its own. Longleaf actually has deep roots and shallow roots. Deep roots go down to tap into water. What longleaf is really good at is, is something called hydraulic lift. Longleaf's got the ability to use those roots that are really deep to pull water up at night, and it actually exudes water out into the surface. Longleaf is a long-lived species, and it can stay as a mature tree for many, many years. In 
indigenous peoples lived within the Longleaf Pine ecosystems for thousands of years. We knew how to travel by the trees. We even had bent trees that would point towards water. Longleaf Pine Forest provided food, materials for shelter, medicinal plants, and needles for baskets. We have stories about how the pine needles are full of bright light, like the stars. Longleaf pine forests were intimately woven into the cultural fabric of indigenous people. The elders that have given me hundreds of stories and lessons say that the oldest woman, the best pine needle basket maker in the nation, she would spend all year making a perfect basket with shapes and different designs in it and then it was used in ceremony and then it was no longer on the earth. Not only did indigenous people use the resources of the longleaf pine forest, they shaped the forest themselves. Native Americans used fire extensively throughout history here in the longleaf pine forest of the southeast. As we think of you know longleaf pine forests and, and you think of lightning it's starting fire but Native Americans were here for a long time. Fire helped to maintain and preserve habitats for plants and wildlife. After European contact, indigenous populations drastically declined. The original stewards of Longleaf Pine Forest later faced removal. We have story fragments now. If they could carry what they were told, that's fine, but you've lost something in that process. Starting in the 19th century, the longleaf forests were unsustainably exploited. For much of the 20th century, the federal government and states tried to suppress fire and keep it from burning across the landscape. With fire suppression, longleaf pine ecosystems declined. Landowners and the timber industry preferred faster growing pine species. The agricultural methods and the forestry started planting the loblolly. They're reversing that now, seeing that red cockaded woodpeckers and the rest of the environment needs the longleaf. So they're going back to that again. There aren't a whole lot of pine needle basket makers left. So I'm hoping to entice some of the younger kids to do this and maybe tell them some stories. I feel like as a, a land manager, it's really important for me to share my lessons with other land managers and private landowners. Long we find forests need fire from anywhere from two to five years. There's so many native plants and animals. They depend on a regular cycle of fire to reduce competition, recycle nutrients, and keep the habitat open and healthy. There's not much nutrients in the soil until you get fire in it. You need nitrogen to make green, and the only nitrogen you're going to get in this ecosystem is probably going to come from the char and the ash. There's an open canopy, and that sunlight on the forest floor and the frequent fire prevents a lot of the hardwood or woody competition to come in. What happens over time is you develop this lush understory of grasses and legumes and forbs. It's remarkable to see how quickly a longleaf pine understory recovers or greens up after a fire. It's just literally days. All this wire grass lofts the pine needle and carries the fire really, really nicely through the ecosystem. I've even seen wire grass burn in the rain. Out here and at a lot of sites, the wetlands have been neglected or the fire's been kept out of them for too long. And in part, people didn't know that the fire was supposed to move through the wetlands. That can affect your hydrology um, because those roots are going to be sucking up water that can make something have a, a much shorter hydro period, which is a time it would hold water, which could affect things like animals that are reproducing in those wetlands. To maintain the health of these complex ecosystems, fire ecologists conduct ongoing research and land managers apply prescribed fire to the forest. As a land manager, prescribed fire is our best tool out here. So we have a lot of training, but what we do is wildland fire lighting. We pick the day, we pick the conditions, we choose the kind of fire that's painted on the landscape. And these are low intensity, very frequent fires, the surface fires that remove 
vegetation and, and pine litter. Prescribed fire makes our forests healthy by preventing the buildup of fuel that can cause a catastrophic wildfire. With the climate being changed and just the dynamic nature of the management history of these forests, every burn, every management treatment we do is an experiment. We monitor, we analyze our results, and then we adjust our next treatment. One challenge that scientists and land managers face is restoring fire to longleaf forests long deprived of fire. Reintroducing fire to longleaf pine old growth uh, after it's been fire excluded for a long time involves a lot of patience. In the absence of fire, not just surface fuels build up, but organic material builds up underneath the base of, uh, of the pine. The decomposition becomes the tree's worst enemy when we uh, take those first few fires to try to peel back the litter layer. And we have to be thinking about the future. We're setting these forests up and these landscapes up towards the future. One of my favorite parts of my job is watching these young people come in on my seasonal fire crews and return year after year and become a fire leader to like really understand how fire works in the ecosystem because, you know, I'm passing the torch. There are hundreds of plant species found in each longleaf pine community. On some of the more productive sites, that can be almost 50 plants per square meter, which is extremely diverse. And then when you run that out to an acre or two acres, it can be over 200 species in that small area. And, and so most systems don't have that type of diversity. This is Baptisia perfoliata a type of legume. These are very important in this type of ecosystem since they're out here fixing nitrogen. You have some of these seed capsules here which different species will rely on and eat. Because of that diversity of ground cover species, you then have all this diversity of wildlife species. The gopher tortoise is a keystone species of the longleaf pine ecosystem. Without gopher tortoises in the southeast, a lot of other species probably wouldn't even exist. It's known for its long burrows that it makes that provide shelter for 300 or more other organisms. That burrow helps protect them in the winter when it's really cold. A lot of different critters will use them as refuges when fire moves through an area. They are in their burrows safe and sound. Most plants and animals have developed behaviors to survive in these areas with frequent fires. White-tailed deer, morning dove, and northern bobwhite run or fly ahead of the flame front. The eastern indigo snake is the longest snake in the U.S. It's a federally threatened species and it's, it's a glorious beast. The gopher frog is Georgia's rarest frog. It spends most of its life in a gopher tortoise burrow. In winter, early spring, it travels to wetlands. It makes this nice long call. It's kind of a... Old growth longleaf is, is super important for the federally protected red cockaded woodpecker because the tree has to be of a certain age to get red heart disease to allow the woodpecker to be able to make a cavity in there. In addition to longleaf biodiversity, there's also biodiversity in the types of habitat where longleaf can occur. So sand hills, and these typically are very dry rolling hills, and these are more mesic soils, wet savannas or flatwood habitats, much wetter habitat. And then what we have are montane, found on higher elevation sites. Habitat restoration is important just to give these types of organisms, the longleaf pines, red cockaded woodpeckers, gopher tortoise habitat so that they can actually have a place to live and thrive and they're not on the brink. through the America's Longleaf Restoration Initiative. There's been amazing work that's been done. Right now, we're at about 5.2 million acres of longleaf. In this effort to re-establish longleaf pine and, and grow the ecosystem, and really represents one of the largest, most coordinated recovery efforts for a species. One restoration success story is the planting of a million longleaf pine seedlings on land belonging to the Porch Creek tribe. Today, they are managing this young longleaf forest with prescribed fire. 
We're also combining the work that we're doing with the longleaf restoration with our climate resiliency work. Climate change is affecting these forests. It's affecting flatwoods that are closer to the coast. We just have to take all of that into account. And as we stand on these sandy soils, probably from some old beach dune at some point, uh, these ecosystems have endured any climate change events. For thousands of years, indigenous peoples lived within longleaf forests and shaped them with fire. But longleaf forests are not only a part of America's ancient past, they are still here being conserved and restored. And with our care and attention, longleaf forests will be part of the American landscape forever. Back then, this w went from the Carolinas, come down in here, and went all the way over to East Texas. You can't use the long leaf when they're green. They have to dry. Otherwise, when you sew it together, the needle shrinks. So I'm standing around a whole bunch of uh, Saracenia flava, so they're trumpet pitcher plants. The concept of ecological time is what it, this has to be around. 